Uh, so morning time, man. What what time do you usually wake up in the morning? Uh, lately, one of my things is I asked the guy, the founder Strava. Mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, what's the meaning of a good life?" And he's not to wake up with an alarm clock. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Dude, that's a really good thing to to try." So yeah, the past this guy's speaking my speed. I know. <laughs> I mean, his butler wakes him up at nine. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no. So I lately. Uh, I don't use an alarm clock, so my natural body is waking up somewhere between eight and nine. Hmm. And, and you don't use an alarm clock at all. You just kind of naturally just yeah. boom, spring up in bed. Yeah, I'm actually. It's funny. Yeah, I get up and I'm just I'm kind of just ready to go right away. Um, today I use an alarm clock if I have to be somewhere like here. Uh huh. Uh, but yeah, just get up and get going. Wait, so you're you're doing the Neville Medora method of let's wake up afternoon every day. <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 rented a house in Malibu for the summer. And uh, like, it was funny because like our schedules are so diametrically opposite in certain ways. Like you've been up, you do 75 miles on a bike and I'm just like rolling out of bed at 1130 <laughs> or something, maybe. Yeah. I think part of all that is just like figuring out when's your sweet spot, yeah. right? Like when I was in like in 20s, like I would basically be up to like one, two, three, just staying up really late and doing the Neville Medora sleep in style. <laughs> and then now it's not that I, I just know that if I sleep in a little earlier, if I go to bed earlier and wake up, just whenever I wake up, I feel more refreshed. I remember having this conversation with you and uh, it was just kind of like, what's the point of like becoming rich if you can't do whatever you want? So like you would, <laughs> you, you have this habit of like, or you used to, you're way better. Thanks, you used to have man. a funny habit of like doing things that would make you mad. So like you would invite people to stay over at your place for like two weeks at a time. And they're like, are you sure? Because I could easily stay at a hotel or whatever. You're like, no, no, stay, stay at my place. And then like day one, you're already annoyed at them. Yeah. And then it's like awkward for two weeks for both of you. Totally. And I was just like, why don't you just tell them to not stay? For, what are you doing? Like, I think what I've been trying to be more aware of and, and for myself, and I think it's better beneficial for others, is just like, what do you want to do versus what you have to do? And I think as we get older, because we're trained in school to do all these things we have to do. Like you have to follow this. You have to raise hands. And uh, recently I'm like, hold on, I don't have to do this? Like, I have Hebrew class twice a week. Mm. I don't have to go to Hebrew class. I signed up for it. So mm. I told her, I was like, I'm not going this week. Uh, or I don't want to have Hebrew class before 10 a.m. because then I have to use the alarm. And I think I've just been more mindful of that, about how do I maximize the things I want to do and then just minimize all these things that I feel like I have to do. Uh, I think that's a great philosophy. I mean, uh, so we talk about this quite a bit, uh, but uh, <laughs> like I, I've always planned life backwards. And so, like, one of the questions I've had is, like, uh, so as of this recording, you are 38 years old, right? Yes. Um, on average, I looked up the stats for your age. Uh, you will die at 78 years old. Actually, 78.4 or something like that. So that means you have 40 years left to live. Nice. 4 -0. That's it. That's so really four sweet. decades. Um, what do you think of that? What, what would you like to optimize for? What do you think about that concept? I'm not sure if I'm – I have thought about when I'm going to die – uh, I think what was actually an interesting parallel of that is like last week I signed my will. And I think we've heard that. I think I don't think anyone who's listening or watching will ever say like, oh, I'm not going to die. I think people know it's happening. But when I signed a will, I was like, holy shit, I'm dying. And this is what happens after I die. And it actually gave me the opposite inspiration of like, how do I do all these things while I'm alive? Versus like, oh, I'm going to have all this money and it's going to go to like my brother. And I was like, fuck that. I'm just going to try to spend it all now. And like, how do I donate it to charity or like give it out to things or enjoy and do the activities? I feel like I've done a lot of the things I've wanted to do in life. And um, I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't really think beyond about a year. I think most of my life is about one year optimization. So like I do, you know, like yearly bucket list. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like, hey, what did I want to do in 2020? And I have that list. I could be benefited by having longer things, but I just haven't. It hasn't oh, worked. Waking up at 10 in the morning to do a podcast. No, I, I actually, yeah, I mean, this is exciting. This is fun. Yeah. Well, I think the, the thing I was talking with someone earlier today, I think part of it is like, what are you looking forward to in your day? What are you looking forward to in your week? And also just like noticing what's just calling you. So like recently I have like looked at kids. I'm like, yo, these things are fucking cool. Like you can program them. They'll like eventually do some work for you. Maybe they'll pay for your dinners. Uh, and it's fun. And so I have been feeling like, oh, that's something that's starting to feel like I want to have that sooner 